George Jones. This is InfoWars Nightly News on Tuesday, September 13th, 2011. And we've had a lot of jam-packed transmissions in the last week and a half since we kicked off this worldwide resistance to tyranny on September 1st. But tonight is particularly power-packed. We've got a special report documenting the fact that there are more slaves today, 27 plus million, than there has ever been in world history. More slaves alive today than we've ever had before. We're also going to look at government narcotics trafficking. Which has grown from poppies, which are right now being hard. Uh, how do you deal with it? What are you doing about it? Well, uh, frankly, this is a part of their culture. So uh, while it might grind in my gut, it, it's what they do. I will tell you, Director Deutsch, as a former Los Angeles police narcotics detective, that the agency has dealt drugs throughout this country for a long time. It's a trillion plus dollar a year industry worldwide. Half of that is consumed here in the United States. Five hundred billion dollars. We're going to be looking at some incredible developments on that front. And we're also going to have a special report filed by our reporters dealing with Facebook and their face scanning system as they prepare the public for total Big Brother surveillance. All that and more is coming up tonight. But first off, out of this cornucopia of news, I've got Ron Paul news again. Just a few days ago, he won the MSNBC poll and MSNBC would not report it. Now, Today, the Wall Street Journal only allowed you to vote for Perry, Romney, or Bachman, or someone else, and 60.4% were for Ron Paul. And when you read the comments, and there are hundreds of these, Ron Paul, shame on you, Wall Street Journal, for leaving his name off the poll. Stupid media trying to shut him out. I voted for somebody else. I'm voting for Ron Paul. Other equals Ron Paul. Ron Paul won this debate. I'm sick of Ron Paul being excluded, marginalized, and ignored. I mean, go read it for yourself. He is winning the straw polls or coming in second place. He is dominating everywhere. And their response is Bachman 1.2, Perry 16.5, Romney 21.8. And, and, and this is geolocated. You can only vote once. So this is scientific. It's just like he got 54% of the MSNBC when it closed, and they just showed the other candidates and didn't point out that he got more than all the others combined. They're scared of him. Why? Because he's anti-New World Order. Because he's the real deal. They're scared of Ron Paul. And uh, this is a long line there have been hundreds of examples in this campaign so far of this exact type of behavior. Same thing three and a half years ago. But this time, people are awake more than ever. He is a major contender. So that's our top story today, because it's not just about Ron Paul. It's about globalist, corporate, whore, teleprompter, media, uh, just so scared of a real constitutionalist. Now, in a few other news items I have here that I'm getting into government drug dealing, I got to read this one. It's so weird. Eel removed from man's bladder after entering penis during beauty spa. This is out of Metro News out of the UK. They've got all sorts of weird beauty spa things. We're getting these tanks with fish that eat the skin off of you and, and supposedly give you this, this great exfoliation. It's the same thing here with these eels. You know, I'm just glad I'm a common guy that likes a good steak or some enchiladas and a cold beer. I don't need to feel like I'm pampering myself in a bathtub full of eels. Uh, but there's that bizarre news. Just thought I'd uh, hit something strange for an occasion. German leader faces key choice on rescuing Euro. That's being spun. They're really handing over all their sovereignty to private bankers that set up the derivative scam. Bachman's coming out. We'll talk about this more with Mike Adams when he joins us, saying that she knows people that have been made mentally retarded uh, from the Gardasil shot. Shows how issues that were fringe are now mainstream. U.S. Census data shows rising poverty a record number of Americans are now uh, under poverty. It's, it's just a giant amount. And we also have a record number of children. 22% uh, are now living in poverty, worse than many third world nations. 
again, number of poor hits 46 million in 2010. You always get these numbers about eight, nine months late. And so uh, America under globalism, NAFTA and GATT is certainly falling apart. And then this story, we're going to try to get these guys on the show. They made 9-11 Press for Truth many years ago. They've gotten interviews with some of the top former White House uh, advisors like Richard Clark. They've identified the CIA agents that ordered the 9-11 stand down. And they've now been threatened with prison time if they release their names. And more and more, we're seeing... Wall Street Journal, New York Times people facing trials for releasing government corruption. So this is serious. CIA threatens 9-11 researchers after dis discovery of cover-up details. Uh, that is coming up uh, in the next few days. We're working on getting those folks on. Now, let's shift gears to the whole shadow government that can't be uh, investigated uh, and is above the law, untouchable, until we hit take our country back. I remember seeing Paul Watson break this about five months ago at PrisonPlanet.com. Since then, it's in the Chicago Tribune and El Paso Times, and I know our guys have put together a package that they can roll over as showing some of these mainstream headlines. But the CIA, just three days ago, it was confirmed, did go ahead and declare national security in this trial where the head of the Sinaloa, that's the number one drug cartel in Mexico, who got caught by the Mexican government, has said, look, I have U.S. government immunity. And there's a photo of him. And uh, th the DEA and others came in uh, to the uh, court hearing, and, and they've now released a PDF of that on the federal government's own uh, servers, where they go, yes, it's true. This guy works for us. He shipped narcotics into the United States. We ship guns into Mexico to knock out their competition. And then, of course, they have the side issue of then demonizing the Second Amendment. So the federal government is shipping tens of thousands of weapons into Mexico to certain cartels to wipe out cartels that aren't laundering their money through them. And uh, what the head of the Sinaloa cartel has now claimed, uh, he was the head of U.S. operations, so I guess number two, uh, has now been confirmed. And there's just part of the federal affidavit where they're saying, yeah, he's been told uh, he has immunity. But it's a good lesson not to serve the dark side because they always burn their own minions. Now, let's turn a bit farther afield to Afghanistan. You've heard in the last two days there's rocket attacks, guerrilla attacks on the U.S. embassy in Kabul uh, there in Afghanistan. And what's really happening is you've got tribes that have their own opium fields burned by U.S. forces, but then select uh, groups are allowed to grow their opium. That's why troops go in and say, are you part of our group? And if you're not, uh, they burn your fields. And so basically it's a drug war over $500 billion a year in opium. 92% of world opium production comes out of Afghanistan alone. Uh, Pre-invasion 10 years ago, only about 11%. So it's up, uh, I don't know, nine, tenfold, close to that. And it's the same thing with Vietnam, opium production exploding uh, into the U.S. These are wars over illegal drugs. You make them legal, you take the profit out, the situation ends overnight. And we've got a couple clips here. The first one is ABC News from a year ago, in, in case you're a new viewer and doubting us, whitewashing it. U.S. military is concerned. They don't like helping grow opium, protecting it, helping ship it out. And so they've spoken out. So the government's response is just throw it in everybody's face and go, okay, we're helping grow the opium, we're helping ship it out, uh, let's go ahead and move along. So here's that clip from ABC News. The Taliban finances much of its operations by selling opium, which is grown from poppies, which are right now being harvested. So here's the question, why are American troops now helping Afghan farmers grow that opium? In western Kandahar, poppy farmers score, kill, harvest their crop, and the Americans do nothing to stop them. Oh, they give them the fertilizer. U.S. soldiers greet farmers. Can you show me which poppy field is yours? They commiserate with farmers. Because if it isn't part of our harvest. crew, we're burning. I'm very sorry for his field. Don't sure. pay cut. And, uh, Shut it down. And that's why soldiers ignore and encourage the farmers. Yeah, ignore the and encourage. Crop, farmers would blame the that U.S. for their poverty and turn toward the Taliban. Oh. If we secure them having a good harvest, now they're going to get paid for all their hard work, and then we can deal with the trafficking afterwards. We can deal with the trafficking afterwards. The whole country's Taliban. It's a bunch of tribes. 
but they know Americans are dumb. It's like our media claims Al-Qaeda is based in Iran. Those are Shiites. They're arch enemies of the Saudi Arabian Wahhabist. But I don't know the soccer teams in Pakistan, do you? Just like we don't know who the players are over there. They just completely play us as idiots. But it got worse with Geraldo Rivera. You can watch the whole clip online. Just type in Geraldo Rivera, U.S. government growing opium. They give them the fertilizer, security, and then load it on and fly it here. And we'll deal with the trafficking when your dumb kid uses it. We'll throw them in a private prison owned by big banks that launder the drug money. Let's play that clip. These troops have confiscated 10,000 pounds of opium before the profit reached the Taliban. Uh, and in a sense, uh, you're watching as uh, this opium is being grown. I know it, it grinds at your gut. Oh, yes, uh, grinds. How do you deal with it? What are you doing about it? Well, uh, frankly, this is a part of their culture. So uh, while it might grind in my gut, it, it's what they do. Uh, we, we provide them security. We're providing them resources, yes. and we're providing them alternatives. Oh. And the Marines are doing the good thing. Uh, Dave, Clayton, and Allison, back to you guys in New York. He just explains it better than we can ever read in any paper what a dilemma it is. We oh. And yeah, they make so much money off the opium per yard there. They make so much money compared to those yeah. other crops. This is the group so it thing. sounds great in theory, and Geraldo says this predicament that these politicians have put these guys oh, in. Oh, predicament. Have to tell them, hey, make a lot less money than the heroin you could be making with right. the poppy. And, and they can't destroy it. Right. We're, Again, Pat Tillman wrote home about this. They had to kill him. Troops were calling me. We were covering it. That yeah, we guard it. We give them the fertilizer. It's loaded on C-130, shipped to America. So the system said, look, we'll just throw it in your face. I was listening to Bloomberg Radio this morning, and they were going, yeah, Europe's imploding. We're setting up a banking dictatorship. Ha, ha, ha. But are Americans going to get concerned? And the host said, no, Americans are dumb. Most Americans don't have a passport and don't know where Europe is. And they began cackling like witches. By being ignorant, by thinking politics and the world doesn't matter, you become a willing dupe, a willing slave in this. You become a joke. And I know our viewers care. You're awake and informed, some of you more than I am. We've got to reach out to these sheeple or none of us have any future. Speaking of somebody that stood up, LAPD detective who had witnessed narcotics trafficking, the CIA tried to recruit him, Mike Rupert, exposed the CIA back in the late 1990s. And his work and Gary Webb's work and others led to a congressional investigation where on C-SPAN the CIA admitted, yeah, we ship cocaine into America. I will tell you, Director Deutsch, as a former Los Angeles police narcotics detective, that the agency has dealt drugs throughout this country for a long time. Director Deutsch, I will refer you to three specific agency operations known as Amadeus, Pegasus, and Watchtower. I have Watchtower documents heavily redacted by the agency. I was personally exposed to CIA operations and recruited by CIA personnel who attempted to recruit me in the late 70s to become involved in protecting agency drug operations in this country. I have been trying to... Well, there's Mike Rupert. You know, the good news here is when good people stand up, we do start reversing this course. But we're talking about trillions of dollars a year total in keeping drugs illegal. It's time to decriminalize. It's time to treat it like a disease. And then if people do want to be addicts, they get it cheap. They don't break in your house. More than 70% the Justice Department admits of crimes in this country are drug related. It's time to decriminalize all of it. Treat it like the illness it is. That's not just the InfoWars Nightly News analysis. That's common sense. The bigger the drug war gets, the more drugs, the more crime, the more police state is on our streets, and now they're converting the police state over to the political commissar, political cops, arresting people like we showed last night for speaking out on street corners and handing out flyers. This is the opposite of freedom. It is pure tyranny. Now... I want to get into slavery because that's what this is. We have 4 million Americans behind bars, more than 10 million people in any one year on probation, paying all these fines and fees. We are a nation of slaves, but the entire world is going under globalist bondage. Not just debt slaves, but physical slaves. Not just sex slaves, but Dyncor and Halliburton, it's turned out, actually run slave factories where people live in basically dog cages. This is what we're talking about, and it has to be faced. 
our reporter has filed a uh, key analysis on this issue. Here's this report with John Bowne. Time Magazine reports, despite more than a dozen international conventions banning slavery in the past 150 years, there are more slaves today than at any point in human history. More than 500 mostly small-scale trafficking syndicates, Nigerian, Chinese, Indian, and Russian, among others, collude and corrupt police officials to enslave local victims. Obama has pledged to make the fight to abolish modern-day slavery a top foreign policy priority. But the U.S. currently spends more in a single day fighting drug trafficking than it does in an entire year fighting human trafficking. According to the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, after drug dealing, human trafficking, both sex trafficking and trafficking for forced labor, is tied with the illegal arms industry as the second largest criminal industry in the world today. And it is the fastest growing. There are an estimated 600,000 to 800,000 children, women and men trafficked across international borders annually. Approximately 80% of human trafficking victims are women and girls, and up to 50% are minors. The total market value of illicit human trafficking is estimated to be in the excess of $32 billion. Sex trafficking is an engine of the global AIDS epidemic. And of course, we can detach ourselves from these mind-numbing statistics, simply turn on our TVs and escape to an illusion of celebrity lifestyles selling us their mythical realities as we all eat from the vicarious trough of slop we are fed by our masters. Our masters, you ask? In 2009, Foreign Policy magazine ran an article entitled The Next Big Thing, Neo-Medievalism arguing that the power of nations is declining and being replaced by corporations, wealthy individuals, the sovereign wealth funds of monarchs, and city-state regions. At what point will we wake up sharing the same hardships as these slaves in third world countries? John Baum, InfoWars Nightly News. Great job, John. Uh, again, I, I've got to say something right here. My team is doing such a great job. I'm so proud of the work we're doing, the hard-hitting reports every night here. We couldn't have done this without PrisonPlanet.tv subscribers. And we're trying to add more and more audio and video formats. We're trying to get more and more information out. Uh, quite frankly, this is a real gamble for me to go to this next level. It's, it is a jump forward. And that's why I need your support as PrisonPlanet.tv members more than ever. Please spread the word about this transmission. Please buy your friends and family memberships. You know, we've got it set where you can have six people sign in with the same username and passcode. So tell your friends and family to tune in, to watch it, to try it out. We're going to start a new thing tomorrow where we're going to send yesterday's show out as a uh, file to people that are members of the InfoWars Insider free news email every Wednesday that's posted up at InfoWars.com. You can go there to sign up for it for free. I just want to reach people. I just want to fight these criminals. I just want to be free. And it's strange that that is seen as extremist nowadays. It's weird to want to be free and not want to be ruled by corrupt people. Now, one of the biggest things we face is the technocracy. And I want to go to this report filed by Rob Jacobson and Darren McBreen that deals with Facebook. You know, the head of Facebook, whenever his users found out that he was selling their personal data, called him a bunch of dumb effers. He's like, they trust us, these idiots. See, these parasites get off on using your trust. They get off on not having basic humanity. They're the people ruining our world. Google spying on people, being CIA funded. Twitter, all of them. And we're on all these systems. We use their system against them. But let's be honest about what they are. Anything the system promotes, you better bet, is parasitic. And we know they're tied in with CBS TV, with face scanning to make it popular. We know they're getting people to log in now by identifying old past friends from high school. This is super creepy. And it ties into this high-tech panopticon. I think we've titled this piece, uh, Facebook Face Scanners of the New World Order. Then, at the end of the piece, 
We're going to break and coming back with an extended interview with Mike Adams on solar flares and the Pentagon even saying it could cause hundreds of nuclear meltdowns, if not thousands. Uh, we're going to get into the Gardasil situation and so much more coming up. It's InfoWars Nightly News. If you believe in this information and want to help make it become even more effective, you support us and you buy war bonds in the Info War Against Tyrants by subscribing at PrisonPlanet.tv. Here is the report. Recently, as a reporter for InfoWars, I tried to log back into Facebook and it wouldn't let me. It wanted me to identify myself not with my passcode, but by showing me obscure pictures of my friends and family. I had the feeling that it had something to do with testing their face recognition technology, and then I saw this article in the Wall Street Journal. We know governments are quietly using face scanning cameras on street corners and in airports, and they have license plate scanners, but how are they going to get the public to openly accept a surveillance society? Well, Facebook recently teamed up with CBS to promote their new fall drama, Person of Interest, to condition people to opt in to their face recognition program. They know who these people are and what their names are, and they want you to confirm it for them. Sure, the security measure confirms who I am, but it also confirms for them who my friends and family are. So I went out to the street to find out what people had to say about all this. I tried to log on from a different computer that I never used before, oh. and Facebook prompted me to say, look, we want you to go through a series of oh, face yeah, recognition. The, yeah, the questions and like showing you the pictures of your friends and sure, stuff. Sure. They want you to identify um, all those pictures of your friends. Yeah, yeah. Um, I guess it's just a privacy and like more of a protective measure because I know people's accounts get hacked a lot. So, so maybe they're trying to actually help us out by giving us a little quiz. I think I know what you're talking about where they show you pictures and it's like, oh, is this this person and you're supposed to confirm it? Yeah, yeah. yeah um, I think that's really weird. Um, I know it's used as a tool just to make it easier to tag people, but I've never heard of it being used to get you to like get back into your page. Do you feel comfortable with the fact that Facebook is data mining all your personal and private information, including you know, your friends' and family's activities? I mean, I can't say that that's comfortable, but I think anything that you put up on the internet is up for public scrutiny. I'm not comfortable with that at all. Um, although I, I know I know they're doing it, um, and I wonder exactly what they're doing with all the information. The government agencies realize that it's a good way to you know pick up on things that they don't like or especially illicit activities. You should you know keep your settings on private and you should be careful with what you post on there. It's easier to monitor people on Facebook than it is to tap people's phones I think to a certain degree. Anything you put up on the public sphere I think is essentially public information. Just with the internet in general we are getting more used to like our business being out there and just getting used to I guess our privacy diminishing a little bit. I'm just not gonna be very informative on Facebook anymore. <laughs> Uh, no, untag myself from every post that I've ever been in. Some people are concerned that Facebook it might be used to acclimate the, the public into accepting a surveillance society. Absolutely. I, I definitely think that it, I don't, while it might not be intentionally so, it could be intentionally so, but it's definitely serving as that. I think it is getting us acclimated to a, a surveillance world. That sounds a bit 1984 <laughs> um, and creepy. People are getting really used to sharing all kinds of information, um, putting everything about their entire life online. We're putting a lot of information in a public sphere, and that information is accessible to anyone. I think, I think it's definitely acclimating people. Who knows if that could be used for good to hold us to a higher standard um, or for something else. Uh, it's really about what we do with it. I personally love Facebook and it's just a way for me to keep in contact with my friends who live all over the world. And for anyone to use that for like keeping track of people, I think that's just really creepy actually. I, I don't feel comfortable with that. It's incredible. Internet kill switches, cyber security, the takeover of the web, warrantless wiretapping. This is America 10 years after 9-11 and it has nothing to do with keeping us safe. Zuckerman, the owner of Facebook, insultingly called his own users dumb Fs. But worst of all, once you've posted your photos and your personal data on Facebook, they say they own it forever. You can make your account private, but it's always there. They're using it. 
Social networks like Twitter, Facebook, and all of it, they have deep government ties. Google was set up with funding from NQTEL, a company whose main client is the CIA. As Wayne Madsen reports, the CIA has always used the popular media of the day to push their propaganda. And today we see Facebook expanding their face recognition capabilities. I'm Darren McBreen for InfoWars Nightly News. Welcome back. It's InfoWars Nightly News on this Tuesday, September 13th, 2011 edition. The Health Ranger, Mike Adams, is going to be joining us in a moment to break down some of the stories that we're about to start covering here. First off, we've got some good news. TSA creator says dismantle, privatize the agency. We'll be talking more about that with Mike Adams, this out of Human Events, another victory showing no matter how much propaganda and how arrogant and hubris filled the social controllers are, they will not break our will. Then we fight back, we can take back our society. Uh, also, we're gonna talk to Mike about another victory. Uh, Rick Perry is being attacked in every single debate he's in about trying to lie and force Texas schoolgirls to take a dangerous vaccine linked to many deaths and illnesses and other complications during the trials. There were even more deaths uh, once he tried to mandate it. And so he's being torn up in the debates. And more uh, good news is coming out uh, as all the candidates basically turn against him, showing that our ideas that were laughed at four or five years ago when they were causing deaths in the trials are now becoming mainstream because we have facts and the truth on our side. It's also coming out that Merck paid legislators to pass mandatory Gardasil vaccine bill. And the numbers have come out, uh, what they paid for the yes votes. We're talking 2000 to $3,000 uh, per person in the California legislature, uh, some as low as just $1,000 to do this, when they make over $500 for the three rounds of shots. So you invest a couple hundred thousand dollars to buy all the legislatures off, uh, in a state of legislators, and then you get hundreds of millions, if not billions, per state by having them mandated. Also, SaneVax uh, Inc. Uh, reports that they found human papilloma RNA and DNA contamination in Gardasil to uh, now have a FDA investigation, they are requesting that that happen, and that's out on the business wire today. So we're on the march. The empire is on the run. But the first reason I've got Mike Adams joining us tonight here at uh, InfoWars Nightly News, 7 o'clock weeknights here at PrisonPlanet.tv, is to get into this report. Because I read the whole thing this morning, and uh, we posted it on InfoWars.com as well as uh, first finding it at NaturalNews.com. And I found the resource was really spot on for my own research. NASA's come out, the military, the Pentagon has come out, uh, big corporations have come out, and they say the biggest national security threat to this country and the rest of the world right now is solar flares. The sun was really active a decade ago. It went somewhat dormant and now is back with a vengeance. And these are solar flares tens of millions of miles long, thousands of times bigger than the Earth, and already, just a few weeks ago, we had major cities on the West Coast with no power because of it. And they say even bigger ones are coming. And so this is a huge event. And the reason it's so important from my perspective is the system has got us so afraid of terrorists, whether it's real or manufactured, and you've got a better chance of dying by uh, being struck by lightning, uh, by even shark attack, honeybee attack, snake bite than you do being killed by terrorists. So why is there all this, oh my gosh, we've got to have checkpoints everywhere and search everybody or, or Al Qaeda is going to kill us. Since when do we become land of the cowards, home of the slaves? You know, old timers knew, don't be a coward because when your time comes, son, nobody can stop it. A solar flare could burn this planet to a crisp. But statistically, that's probably not what's going to happen, thank God. Statistically, it could cause electromagnetic pulse much more powerful than any weapon system and knock out every nuclear reactor on the planet or on the side of the planet facing the sun that's in daylight when the flare hits. And we already saw a big weapons plant that was mixing uranium and plutonium in France explode yesterday. And they said, don't worry, there's no radiation, but there were some deaths, just like they lied to us for several months. Remember that? 
They lied to us for more than three months, saying there's no high radiation, there's been no meltdowns. Turns out five of the six reactors in Japan at Fukushima completely melted down. I knew that three days in when reactor number three with MOX fuel, plutonium, blew up, and I, I blew up the video and saw what looked like rods. I went and looked at the manufacturer of that 40-year-old General Electric system and learned that, that that was a rod casing, not just from the rods stored on top, but internal rods. It completely blew sky high. They knew the isotope showed there'd been a total meltdown, the biggest disaster in human history with nuclear systems. And our government's answer was raise the levels of what they say is safe radiation. So that's my commentary on the situation. Now to go through it all is just a great patriot, somebody who is just uh, doing so much wonderful work. Out of all the great people out there fighting corruption, I've got to say Mike Adams is right up there at the top uh, from Natural News. Of course, he is the health ranger. And we're going to go through all of this, the solar flares, the vaccines, the TSA, and the fact that he narrowly has survived. You're talking just 100 yards away, helicopters dumping, putting out fires. So he can't be in studio because he's still got the fires at bay as he lives outside Austin, ravaged. Mike Adams, great to have you here with us. Hey, Alex, great to be joining you. Thanks for having me on. Mike, I've thrown out all these issues. What do you want to tackle first? Well, let's talk about the solar flares. And now segueing from the, the fires of Central Texas, which were quite devastating, you know, I'm into personal preparedness, as you are, and most of your listeners are. But when those fires hit, I realized I had a huge gap in my preparedness plan. I did not have a fire respirator and fire gear. So I immediately made sure that I had that covered. And then, so I actually ordered products and got them in. And now I can actually fight fires to some degree that are in my front yard if I have to. But then I also began to ask questions, where else do I have gaps in personal preparedness? What are the real risks to safety, to growing food, to uh, uh, surviving on, on our planet? Now you hinted at this. One of the things that the US government does just maliciously and, and insidiously is they, they make people think that things that aren't dangerous are very, very dangerous, like so-called terrorism. And then at the same time, they ignore the things that are really dangerous and make them seem like they're not dangerous at all, like Fukushima, for example, or now what, we're, what is theoretically a big risk of a, I should say a big risk in our lifetime, not today, not tomorrow, but over a human lifetime, it's a very real risk that a solar flare could knock out the power grid and it could knock it out for years in some places and it could disconnect power from the nuclear facilities that are trying to run coolant pumps to keep their fuel rods from going into a meltdown status. Well, that's right, Mike. We are such a dependent society now and technology is great, but it's a double-edged sword. It took 80 years or more to build our modern system. And when a little tornado comes through or a hurricane, you can have places out for three, four months, and it's a national effort to get it back up. But if you have widespread uh, systems knocked out, then it causes a cascading where you're literally knocked back to the Stone Age. And you're right. Yes. They estimate, because they've been studying the sun for more than 300 years uh, in, in a modern scientific fashion, that these solar flares are a 100-year event. The problem is it appears we're entering one of those in the next decade. So you're right, it's a once in a lifetime deal, but we're here and 100 years ago, we didn't have these systems to be knocked out. But if you go back 100 years ago, there were events with solar flares that did blow out some of the early cities that did right. have electrical systems and it's happening now. And it's not just you saying this. No, not at all. NASA is, has put out information about this. Oak Ridge National Laboratories actually calculated the risk of a large solar flare knocking out a nuclear facility. And it calculated that risk as being 33% over the 40 year lifetime of a typical nuclear power plant. So that's a, that's a one third or, or 33 and 100 chance uh, for every nuclear facility that exists out there. But the really, well, I, you could say good news or bad news is that these events, and the last big one was called the Carrington event in 1859. So that's pre-modern technology, that's pre-electrical grid for the most part, and that's pre-nuclear power plants all over the country. They'll but make wash lines today, outside in some areas literally light up with electricity. Exactly. They had telegraph lines, and power surged through the telegraph lines and actually lit up. And they could disconnect their batteries, and they could still send telegraphs in some areas because there was so much power surging through these lines. But 
modern civilization, with its reliance on nuclear power, and there are over, well over 400 nuclear power plants operating every day around the world, this system has never faced a Carrington scale event, a solar flare that could wipe out the power grid. And underwriting and, laboratories. Uh... Oak Ridge that, uh, and and other systems that carry out these inspections. Oh yes. From my research, they've never even called for electronics and things to be even somewhat shielded. I mean, the 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 establishment has known at least in the last 50, 60 years about this electromagnetic pulse and uh, other things that the sun can cause, and they've made no preparation except in their systems. Uh, and, 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 and this is almost like a nuclear war level type crisis because we've got 7 billion people, more than half of them, totally urban and dependent on technology. And if we were to have even a partial knockout, I mean, this is, this is catastrophic. Well, yeah, and it's not just losing electricity and losing the satellites and, and losing the power grid. It's the fact that hundreds of nuclear power plants could then go into a meltdown situation and unleash Fukushima scale events times hundreds, which would irradiate the soils, irradiate the oceans, irradiate the atmosphere, and it would make human life on our planet virtually un unlivable for perhaps a year, perhaps a couple of years. Exactly. That's why I called it as bad as a nuclear war, not being clear. You're absolutely right. Now, and again, the, and, and the government admits this themselves and, and major corporations, and you source it all in your article. You're not yeah. speculating here. Why do you think there's this irrational chutzpah or, or, or bravada in the establishment? I mean, even after Fukushima has been for six months r raining radiation down, California as far east as Vermont, many levels higher in isotopes, in milk, uh, in lettuce. And their answer was, we'll just raise the isotope between 1,000 <laughs> times and 100,000 times, depending on what isotope, and just wave a wand and say it's safe. So do they really believe if they just say reactors exploding and, and radiating us, if they just wave it and, 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 and say everything's fine? I mean, I'm all into technology. And I know they even have a lot of cleaner, safer nuclear technologies, but there's no attempt to move to those. They're building more right. of the old designs. I mean, what's wrong with these people? With the GMO, with the nuclear weapons, with all of it, it's like they want to destroy us. Well, you're exactly right. There are nuclear power uh, designs that can passively cool the fissionable materials without using electric pumps, but those designs have not been incorporated widely, uh, or, or at all, actually. So, so that has been abandoned. Instead, they favor the general electric designs that require more pumps and more maintenance and more upkeep. But overall, there is, there is an inherent arrogance in the scientific community, not only when it comes to nuclear power, but also medicine. There's an arrogance about vaccines, that vaccines have to work, and they must work, because we say they do, not it's because a cult. of any I evidence. mean, doctors have one of the highest suicide rates. They have one of the lowest life expectancies. It's the same with top scientists. You meet these people, and they're usually neurotic yeah. and, uh, and literally think they're geniuses. And when you talk to them, they're only smart in a specialized area. They That's don't right. have general knowledge. Now, I meet other scientists and people that have general knowledge, and they're tuned in and awake. But it seems like the, the establishment goes for this centralized type, arrogant, know-it-all person. Yeah, that's exactly what's out there, and that's that's what's dominated the vaccine industry. That is what has dominated even the energy industries. You know, science has a lot of promise, but it has also given us, sadly, uh, a lot of circle the wagons, circular logic. The self-supporting scientists who abandon ideas that should really be able to help us, such as, for example, free energy technology which I believe exists. We know cold fusion or, or exists. Or even regular off the grid. They won't come and inspect and give you the permit in most states. That's right. Uh, if you have your own off the grid, and they'll harass you. But, oh, everything's government paid for if you tie into the grid. Well, well, well yeah. now you're still, still part of the grid. And I think that's one of the big drivers. There's a lot of reasons here, but I want your take on this, and we'll get into other issues. Because big corporations, and I'm all for free market, but these are monopoly men, invest in different technological ideas once they invest in it, there can't ever be any oversight. They can't ever admit dangers because now it's seen simply as a product. Well, that's right. And what's, what's really astonishing is that by running our world on these dangerous nuclear power designs, they're putting 
human civilization in grave danger. They're risking everything. They're risking the future of human life on our planet in order to protect their corporate profits and the nuclear power industry. We need to dismantle. I mean, I, look, I've never been an opponent of nuclear power just to be an opponent of it. But now understanding this risk of a solar flare and how it could cascade into the power systems, I think we must really look at changing nuclear power to a passive cooling design or dismantling the existing yes. power structures. Look, 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 this is a 1940s type system. It's extremely dangerous. Uh, it's a huge industry now in nuclear weapons uh, and the rest of it. That's why they go with the old reactor systems is so they get fissile material to build more weapons. That's right. And they're destroying our entire future. You know, Dr. Busby, who advises the EU and the British government, he said a lot of his colleagues think they're doing all of this to reduce fertility because they know fertility has plunged everywhere where you have uh, nuclear reactors and also uh, the development of the fuel. And so this is all part of a larger eugenics operation. Uh, it, it's yeah. clear now with the disaster in the last year, yesterday in France, the disaster in Canada that got no attention, the 50s disaster in Simi Valley that was bigger than Chernobyl that was covered up, Chernobyl, Fukushima, and government then trying to lie, getting caught, and no one even gets in trouble. At least the Japanese resigned. Here they yeah. would be promoted like 9-11. It's time to get rid of nuclear power. It's time to get it out I, of the ships. I totally it's, agree. The boats. I, it's time to get it out of the subs. It's Look, they've got two reactors in Austin, and they're so good at keeping it quiet. I tell people at you know cocktail parties, and they laugh at me saying, I would have heard. They're both up at the J.J. <laughs> Pickle Center in North Austin. They're both dangerous research. And for folks that don't know about nuclear power, that means they're turning them on and off all the time. They're doing tests up there, and they've got research reactors all over the country. They've got level four bioweapons labs with stuff that will kill all humans it comes in contact with that makes airborne Ebola look like child's play in hundreds of facilities in level two and level three containment. Again, it's like the corporate whores that run things have a death wish and they want me to be scared of men with beards and turbans and I'm sick of it. Right. Well, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned the biohazards because if you come down to it, Alex, I think the three, the top three greatest threats to the continuation of life on our planet, human life in particular, are number one, the solar flares wiping out modern civilization at, through the scenario we just described. Number two is GMOs and the genetic engineering and the DNA contamination of our planet. And number three is the bioweapons, the possible release, accidental or intentional of infectious disease, you know, level four bioweapons that devastate human populations. So those three are the big three. Again, solar flares, GMOs, and bioweapons. And they, each one of those could destroy human civilization. In combination, we, we are really at risk, and we need to take action to stop these, these death worshipers from having such control over our planet. Well, Mike, Mike, looking at this information, now, now we've got to hurry because we've only got a few minutes left here on InfoWars Nightly News. We normally just interview a guest for 10 minutes, but your information is so important. We could talk to you for hours. Um, what do you make of the fact that Rick Perry's being excoriated for his, his attempted forced inoculation of schoolgirls with the admittedly deadly Gardasil and the fact that more and more it's coming out that Merck is buying off uh, legislatures to then try to force people to take stuff. I mean, this is the ultimate tyranny here, the ultimate civil rights issue. Yeah. Well, it also shows the ultimate victory that uh, we are achieving. Infowars, uh, Prison Planet, you, Alex, what an impact you're having, and Matt Drudge as well, because this issue is now, it has now become a, an attack point on Rick Perry, whereas several years ago, I think it was 2007 or 2008, when both InfoWars and Natural News first wrote about this issue, we were the lone voices in the wilderness uh, uh, criticizing Rick Perry for Gardasil vaccines. And people criticized us. They said, oh, no, all these, all these teenage girls, they have to be protected. They have to be made safe. And these vaccines are the best thing in the world. Well, that tide has turned. And now it's an attack point. It is rightly discrediting Rick Perry because he made the wrong decision, because he put teenage girls at risk. I believe he is indirectly responsible through his decision, through his false mandate, his hoax, that that was a requirement. He is responsible for the maiming or perhaps even the deaths of 
some number of teenage girls oh, who no, should be alive deaths. today. There were deaths in Texas and other areas after it happened, and it helped them break the ice and try to get the force mandate in, in other areas. Moving quickly here, another victory. Uh, TSA in major polls is over 90% unpopular. Uh, everyone's coming out against it. Here's human events. They've been accused of rampant thievery. One of them get caught. More got caught today. Spending billions of dollars like drunken sailors, groping children and little old ladies and making everyone take off their shoes. And then it goes on to say that the founder of the TSA, Representative John Micah, has now come out and said, abolish it. And, and even if they try to sell some corporate fascist model of it, they'll, they'll now fall as well. I mean, this is another victory from voices in the wilderness talking about this many years ago to now. I mean, it just shows on every issue, when we have the truth and fight back, we win. Absolutely. This is a huge victory, but it's also an urgent warning because you know, you know very well what government agencies do when they feel they're about to be squeezed out of existence. They create false flag attacks. So you can bet the TSA, somebody within the TSA, maybe rogue agents, maybe somebody up at the top, is trying to figure out how can they stay relevant in a time when people are sick and tired of them. And the answer to that is to stage an attack in an airport, and we saw them practicing this before, I believe in, in Minnesota, in fact, stage an attack to make the TSA look like it's actually doing something, even though it isn't. So well, they just got caught fire. in Arizona trying to get plastic explosives on a plane, real yeah. plastic explosives. Right. And, and, of course, the underwear bomber, where admittedly they uh, got him on the plane, he was all drugged out, came out. The State Department was ordered to do that. I mean, and, and this just hangs out there in plain view. Well, Mike Adams, it's great having you in Central Texas. You're going to be sitting in and doing the radio show this Friday, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Central, naturalnews.com. And I know you'll be covering this and a lot more. Mike Adams, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you, Alex. Great to join you. Have a great show. You too, my friend. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that's it with Mike Adams. And that concludes InfoWars Nightly News. We'll be back tomorrow night, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, 8 p.m. Eastern. 5 Pacific, 6 Mountain, if you believe in what we're doing, or if you believe in the First Amendment and the work we're putting in here to cover real issues, please become a PrisonPlanet.tv member. Please buy friends and family memberships. Please spread the word about InfoWarsNews.com and all the new things we're adding, the new features. Uh, I mean, the crew here, the work, the research, we passionately believe in human liberty. And again, I want to thank all the members of PrisonPlanet.tv. I want to ask you all to record these shows. Uh, we're going to launch a lot of new systems. Well, this will be delivered on tabletop uh, systems to subscribers. Uh, we've got a lot of TV networks and systems, but we're developing the show right now. And we couldn't have done this without you. Please also visit the online video bookstore at InfoWars.com because we couldn't have done any of this without your support. I'm Alex Jones signing off for InfoWars Nightly News from the front lines of the InfoWar. Lord willing, we'll see you back tomorrow night, 7 p.m.